Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you for joining me. Uh, and if you haven't already, please remember to subscribe. I was out yesterday doing some landscape photography and uh, whilst I was walking around, I, I noticed some of the glorious textures in some of those fantastic old Cumbrian slate gate posts, you know, the ones with the holes in. And I took a series of photos of them, uh, hoping that some of them would be successful. Got home, downloaded them, had a look at them in Lightroom and decided that as individual images they weren't quite striking enough but maybe as a panel of textures they would work and what i want to show you today is just a photoshop technique of, of taking some photos that you might find interesting more as a set than as uh, individual images and portraying them maybe as a, a triptych in photoshop so today's demonstration how to create a, an interesting triptych in Photoshop that I hope you find interesting and enjoyable. Okay, so I've just opened the photos that I'm going to incorporate into the triptych. Uh, I've actually opened four photos. Um, three of them are going to be the main images within the triptych. The fourth is going to be just a, a, a canvas at the background, so it's got some texture to it, and it's not quite so boring. Now, of course, in the traditional Photoshop way of working you can only see one at a time so I'm just going to pop up the window there I'm going to come down to a range there and drop down to four up so that way I can see all four if we just get them in to easily viewed sizes there we have now the one in the bottom right hand corner is the one I'm going to use as the background image the other three I'm going to use as vertical this one on the top right I'm just going to crop uh, into a vertical shape. So just concentrating on this bottom image first, if I try to drop three vertical images in across here, side by side, they're going to run out of space. Either that or we're going to have to crop the top or the bottom of it quite a lot uh, to make it longer and thinner. I'm not going to do that, I'm just simply going to distort that bottom image a little. If I go up to image, uh, and I drop down to image size. There it is. I'm not going to work on percent. This I usually work on percentages, and we will be working on percentages later on. But on just on resizing this background here, I'm going to work on pixels, and I'm going to disconnect again that link between width and height, so I can make it wider than it is high. And I'm just going to take that 6,048 pixels wide, and make 8,000 wide. Find a number that works for you. Um, I know it works on this one because I've already practiced. Click on OK, and that's just going to turn that bottom right hand image into a more landscape image. It's going to be stretched, but heck, it's rock. So nobody really knows what it looked like in the first place. And there we have nice, long, thin photo, which will take those verticals perfectly. I want it to look a little bit more delicate so the three images that sit on top of it stand out far more. So what I'm going to do on this layer is add another blank layer of transparency. On top of that I'm going to then fill it with white. Hit it. Fill with foreground colour. Okay. There is a shortcut key for that. It's Alt and uh, backspace will fill with the foreground colour. OK, um, I haven't lost my mind. I know it's completely white. And that's because our blending mode is currently normal. If I take that blending mode and I change that to soft light, it just lightens up that background. Now we have an opacity slider here, so we can take the opacity down, take it right down to 0%, that becomes a transparent layer somewhere around there i think that looks pretty good but we can leave it as a separate layer we can adjust it as the images go next thing i want is these three pictures all to work at the uh, same resolution now again this is this is just over 4000 pixels high this is 6000 pixels high as is that and that's just over 4000 pixels high so they all need to be shrunk just a little bit. Uh, let's go on to this one. Change the image size on that. 
And this time I'm going to link those back together. I'm going to, instead of working in pixels, I'm going to work in percent. And I'm going to make this photo 50% as its original size. Right? We're going to go to the next one. We're going to make this photo 50% of its original size. This photo we want as a vertical. So firstly, let's just take the crop tool on it. Now I've got the crop tool here set at a ratio of two to three, which is the same as the other two. That's a vertical two to three. And all I need to do here is slide this image backwards and forwards. And this image, because it's in landscape format, we want it cropped to a vertical first. So I'm going to take the crop tool here, and you'll see that it's it's set to a format of two to three. That's in the vertical format. So it's already giving me exactly the right crop size. I just take this and I move it side to side. Then I can get the crop I want on it. And I quite like that little bit of yellow lichen at the top there. I love the hole. That'll do me. But it's still too big. Size of this one. Control Alt I resizes the image. Uh, I'll show you it in pixels so you know what I'm talking about. It's 4024 high. The others were 6000 high. It's a 3 to 2. Therefore, I only need that resized to 75% of its original size. All those three images are now the same size. So when we take them and we drop them into that bottom right hand panel, we can use them as a triptych. We can arrange them in any order we like. Let's start with this one here because I think this would look really good on the left hand side. So let's drop that in over there. I'm going to cover the hole a bit with it. And that's central. I don't know if you can see that little red line that shows that it's absolutely centrally placed. That's pretty good. Let's take this one here, drop this into the middle. You'll see that's now bang central because I've got a little red line across and up on there. Take the top one here, drag it down to the right hand side. You'll see actually they do show as you slide them around, that's got 5.63 centimeters between each, which is perfectly done. They're lined up and for all intents and purposes, job done. Let's uh, consolidate all the tabs, window, arrange, boom. So we've got this and let's get it full screen so you can see what we're doing now. Um, these are all now perfectly lined up. OK, so these don't these leads look great as they are, but they don't stand out enough from the background. And I want them to to stand out a little. We can do that by adding a bit of a drop shadow. We can also make separate them from the background by putting a, a, a key line around them. You can put a single key line, double key line, whatever you like. Let's start with a, a little thin black key line around this. I'm just going to go and take the left hand one here. We're going to go up to edit. We're going to come down to stroke. I've got the stroke color set as black and I've got the width 15 pixels and I'm stroking on the inside of this layer. So we're going to have the first one there. There's a black line. While we've got the 15 set, let's go edit stroke again there and then we'll take fourth layer four and we'll edit stroke do it again there 
I've done a little black key light. I'm going to put a white one outside it. You might like it, you might not like it. I think it separates it from the drop shadow that we're going to add in a minute. So let's just take a white foreground uh, color and we're going to go back to edit. We're going to go back to stroke. This time we're going to click on outside and we're going to make that line uh, 30 pixel. Click on OK. I'm showing you this so you know what to do. I'm not saying that it's the best thing to do or it's the right one to, to work with. Maybe just the black line, maybe just a white line, maybe both. Uh, take the middle one, do the same. Edit stroke, 30 pixels on the outside. And take the right hand one and do this exactly the same. Edit stroke, you can actually write an action to do all this. Be careful writing actions, I haven't done a uh, Photoshop demonstration on actions yet. It's in the pipeline, I'm going to do it, don't worry. So already they stand out even more from that background, but wouldn't they look great if they hovered above it? So on that la layer two, I'm just going to come down here and, and at the bottom of the um, layers palette here, you'll see a little thing there that says FX. If we click on FX and I go to drop shadow there, now the light on these tends to be coming from the top left hand corner. You can see the sun is catching here and the sun is catching here. Now their default angle in Photoshop is for 30 degrees, so the, the drop shadow is coming the wrong way. You can change the angle so the drop shadow looks about right. Um, I'm going to set this distance at 200. You see you can change the distance of the drop shadow. You can have it quite far out. You can have it quite far in. Um, I'm going to set that one at 200. You can use the keyboard as well to do it. And the size of it, you can have very, very, this is the sort of feathering on the edge, the size. You can have a very sharp edge shadow, really bright sunny day. You can have a totally diffuse shadow that you can hardly see. I'm going to go for about 100 on this. I think that looks pretty good. Click on OK. Go to layer two. Drop shadow. Two hundred distance, one hundred size, same angle. They always come from the same angle. You can't put drop shadow layer four. You can't put drop shadows at different angles on the same photo. It would look a mess. FX drop shadow. Okay. And there you have it. Let's have a look at it full screen so it looks a bit neater. Sorry I'm in the way but I hope you get the idea. Let's shunt me up into the corner a little bit more. A lovely triptych of three details of slate, uh, Cumbrian gate posts, um, set against some nice slate texture. I think that looks pretty good. and I think it would work really well as a texture. Try it on different subjects. Logins works well as well. All sorts of things. Um, they can look good. Hope you've enjoyed the demonstration. Um, I'll show a couple uh, of examples uh, right now. Thank you for watching. See you again next time and please remember to subscribe.